Hello everyone, welcome. Let's talk about OAuth 2. So first of all, OAuth 2 is a authorization protocol or framework rather than a authentication framework. So OAuth 2 specified you need to do some authentication, but it doesn't specify how you need to do it and what kind of authentication you need to do. So if you want to look more comprehensive or complete framework. There's another framework called OpenID Connect, which utilizes OAuth 2 as authorization protocol. And based on that, it adds the profile and user authentication related you know, uh, informations. So first of all, let's just focus on the OAuth 2 flow. And OAuth 2 in general have four rows user or browser as user will be using browser and then we'll have the application or the client and then we'll have the authorization server and in this case is an OAuth authorization server and lastly we will have resource server or protected resource and in general a lot of times the user or browser will own the resource Okay, so this resource is protected and the user have this uh, privileges or, you know, control over this resource server. And suppose user is browsing through a browser, right, like Chrome, and then he's trying to visit an application. And this application has some functionalities that a user really like to use. But the problem is, in order for a user to use this application, the application will need some privileges from the user to access its protected resource. So for example, I have an app which talks about like a, a personal things management or personal time management. And it would like to access my mailbox, say Gmail. And in this case, in order for me to use this application, I have to give the application some kind of privileges to use or access the resources. Okay. And before off or in the old times, the way to do it is simple and straightforward, but not very good. That is to say, the user will give the credentials like username and password for his mailbox to the application. And once the application possess the username and password, he can use that to access the resource and fetch whatever he wants. So this brings a lot of problems. First of all, what if this application want to do something harmful to use this resource? That's not good, right? And also, what if the user want to revoke the privilege from the application? He needs to, you know, update his username and credentials and reset a password, which is not convenient to use. Okay. And also, when the user gives the full credentials to the application, there will be a security vulnerability involved. The credentials might be stolen, you know, somewhere during the transportation. So it's just in general not convenient or safe to use that. And that's OAuth coming into play. So you imagine a situation that um, a user is driving a very expensive sports car, right, to a hotel, and there's this valid person is helping the user to park the car. According to the old time way, the user is gonna give full credential. That is the key to the valid person. And then the valid person will drive the car away, right? What if we can have a dip different concept of key? Say, uh, you know, modified key. And when this key is passed to the valid person, he can only drive the car to a certain distance. He cannot, you know, drive Far further away, otherwise the car will just stop. Or also, the key will only have limited access. He cannot open the glove box. He cannot open the trunk. So the privilege, in this case, is tailored. It's just portion of the privilege given to the user. And that's one of the basic ideas about all of two. User will delegate the access to the application, and will delegate a portion of it. A lot of times when you are trying to use single sign-on through OAuth 2, right? 
you will see a page saying that do you grant privileges for this application to access your like resources one two three and then do you grant it or do you deny it okay so that's the of uh, framework at the back end now we understand a little bit of history and uh, the reason why we need to use OAuth 2 and we can come to a more detailed workflow for how this OAuth 2 is working. So first of all, the scenario begins when the user want to use an application or through the client. So the user open the browser, type in the URL for this application and the application gets loads up, right? And then in order to use it, application is asking the user to get some privilege to his resource, right? So the first thing that application will do is redirect the browser to visit the authorization server. So this redirect happens in the HTTP context that is within the browser, okay? So the user will see the authorization server's page asking the user to verify his credentials. And a lot of times it's just username and a password. So once the user enters login details and the credentials and has been verified, those credentials are correct. The authorizing server will redirect the user back to the application through the browser redirect, okay? And at this time, specifically, authorization server will attach a authorization code in the URL. And because this code is generated by authorization server and you can use it to get some uh, credentials from authorization server. So the, in general, the application or client will fetch that authorization code and send to the authorization server at the back end through a post method. So be careful at this time, it's not gonna be a browser redirect. It will be a back end post method to post authorizing code. And not only the code actually, there are some other information involved, but the whole point is trying to get a access token. So the authorizing server will validate the off code and uh, related information and once it's valid the authorizing server will return through the response backend response including a, a bunch of parameters usually in a JSON format and one of them is access token okay so once this access token is returned to the application then the application can fetch that token and put his request you know, with that token and send it to the resource server. So usually this token will be a bearer token, meaning whoever has the token will be granted for the access. And this bearer token will be um, attached to the header of this HTTP request. So this application will have the token and try to get the data from resource server. And of course, resource server will check the token, whether it's correct or not. It depends on what kind of token it is. You might need to talk to the authorizing server to double confirm or authorizing server and resource server will share the same database so that resource server can go to the database directly to verify or it's J JSON or JWT token that is self uh, verifiable, it's signed so you can have the public key directly decrypted and verify its validity. So it has all different you know, um, mechanisms or ways to verify that. But anyway, once the token has been verified, the resource server will return whatever data needed to the application. And then once the application got that, um, he will just return the whatever uh, generated information or page to the browser for user to use. And one, one more step is here when the user is trying to send login credentials to the authorizing server. Authorizing server validate the login details. And at this, at this time, before reading right back to the application, he might just pop up the page saying that the application is trying to access one, two, three, you know, privileges or resources, do you ground or not? 
So this is optional, not required, but a lot of times it happens. If it happens, it happens here. Okay, and then if the user choose to ground, then the authorization server will redirect the user back to the application. Okay, so that's an overview and brief look at the OAuth 2 framework and workflow. And if you want to learn more about it, I have a course published on Udemy and you can find the coupon link on, on the um, video description. I have put it in the minimum, you know, the lowest price I can set. In $10, you can get a lot of information. Okay, so hope you guys enjoy it. Have a good one.